Well, it's Thank so lovely you. to see you. So nice to see you. Great to see you. Look uh, how big I am on the telly. Look how That's big you are. That's a big telly. I love can it. We, it is a big telly. Can we watch the football on this on Sunday? Do you know we could? What a place to watch it. It would actually it'd be like you were there, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, it would. would be yeah. like you were there. Yeah. How do you lice it? How do you lice it? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's great. I love how you do that with your tours. You always have a, a song. Yeah, they're always ridiculous names that have no relation to what's actually in the show. But that's Because when you put it on tour, there's no... You don't know what you're going to say when you put do it you on sale. Not? Do you not? Do you not? I know have a you bit. got a rough idea and then it just depends how it goes? Yeah. Because you right. kind of move with the news a bit and, you know, move yeah. with whatever. And it's yeah. not until March next year. So when they said, oh, what do you want to call it? I thought, well, let's just do another one that's ridiculous. And I think that's the most ridiculous. Because it doesn't even is... fit on the ticket. I know, but we know the song, more, more, more. Like, that there it is. How do you like it? How do you like it? See, it works. It gets in your head as It well. works beautifully. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It is a spectacle, though. Your shows are always... Good value, let's say, well, and really good fun. Thank you. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, it's my favourite thing to do stand up because yeah. it's just, it's the most simple, beautiful art form. And it's just a, a man or a woman or a non binary person with a microphone <laughs> saying whatever they want to say. And as long as it's funny, that's all that matters. Exactly. And I just, I, I, it's my first love and I can't wait to get back to doing it. Um, now, look, fans in Newcastle are being a little shy. Should we give them a shout out? <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, I, so this tour I'm doing arenas. I've never done arenas before. I've, I've supported uh, Jack Whitehall at arenas, yeah. but I've never done my own tours there. And Newcastle Arena is a 10,000 seater. Currently, are at 150 tickets sold, Lorraine. Right. So if anyone wants to come to the show, maybe a trip to Newcastle <laughs> would be a nice time to go. Maybe they just don't. Well, they know now, you see. They know now, yeah. They know now, Newcastle. so it'll be sold out yeah. very, very, very soon. You'll get very close to the front of the stage. You may even end up being on the stage. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Now, look, Joel Isaac has got you back has been such a huge success. You called it a sexy watchdog. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. kind of is. You know, I get that because you're doing great work, but it's really... I mean, there's brilliant campaigns that you've done, but it's really funny as well. Well, thank you. And you are a guest on this new series, which I'm so thrilled about. Looking forward to that. And, and you are... Um, on an episode about animals, so yes. sort of, and we've got a story on that episode about wool, which um, is really important actually. So British wool used to support farms; it used to, the farms used to pay their rent with yeah. the with the sale of wool, and now it's not really worth anything because synthetic fibres have taken over; they're a lot cheaper, and so a lot of farmers are just getting rid of wool; they're just putting it on with the muck essentially into the compost, Jeez. and it's total waste because it's a brilliant fibre. It's obviously biodegradable. Flam uh, it's not flammable, inflammable, whatever the word is. Uh, great insulator. So we're trying to promote British wool. We're trying to get British wool cool again, get so people using it. And it can be used for so many things. So, I yeah, know. So, not um, just jumpers, not just not fabulous just jumpers. jumpers yeah. Many other things as well. Yeah. And this is people's livelihoods we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it really is. It's fair, you know, it's, yeah. that's what I mean about the fact that, yeah, you can sit and watch the show and have a right good laugh. But actually, you know, campaigns against puppy farming, against, you know, plastic pollution yeah. and wool too. Yeah, you, yeah. You are There's, flying the flag. There's a lot going on. It I'm is. really proud of it as a I show. You should be. You should be. It does it get stuff done. And last series, I mean, we got back millions for consumers, which is sort of insane. It's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's really fun. And I'm just so thrilled that you agreed to come on it. You but, were, I mean, yeah. But I, it's, it's when you see a show and you really like it, you want to be, you want to be part of it, which is, which is great. Now, is there a kind of... A sort of club of comedians, not officially, you don't all mm. go out together or anything or necessarily keep in touch, but you, you look out for each other. Yeah. In a way. Because Sarah Milligan helped you out, didn't she? Oh my God, right. So when I was starting out, I was, uh, yeah, I, I was sort of, I, I decided I was going to move back home because I didn't have enough money to both learn to drive and uh, pay rent. Right. So I went back home and I needed a car. And Sarah Milligan was getting rid of an old car and she, she could have sold it, but she said, I'm just going to give it to you. Aww. So she gave me this car. I mean, it was a nice gesture in some ways, but then months later she went on Would I Lie to You and told a story about how she needed the toilet on the motorway and just moved into the passenger seat and did it <laughs> did it into the seat. A wee-wee, I hope. A wee-wee, oh, yeah. Good. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> she says a wee-wee. <laughs> But she said, oh, I got it cleaned or whatever. I was like, well, that is the seat I put my sandwiches on, Sarah. So, <laughs> so thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for the gift. Um, yeah, so there is this amazing... I mean, I, she's the, one of the most generous people. She's lovely. She's so lovely. Really lovely woman and very, very funny oh. as well. And there's not... What's really good is we are seeing 
more women coming through, you know, uh, different types of yeah. comedians coming through. Yeah. And that's, you know, that, that's how it should be. Absolutely. And I've always felt that stand-up could be and should be a place where anyone can say whatever they want. It's, yeah. it's a free space and it should be uh, diverse and it should be a place Absolutely. where we hear from different voices. And I think that's starting to happen in a much mm. bigger way and much more exciting way. Um, Do so, you yeah. ever worry, though, about a joke that you tell? Well, because, I mean, comedy is, by its nature, offensive to somebody, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody's going to... I mean, that's sometimes why we laugh. Yeah. You know, because we go, oh, my God, I can't believe he said that. Yeah. How's he going to get away with that? Do you ever self-censor? Do you, I mean, I guess if you know, yeah, all you know. the time. I mean, we yeah. always self-censor all the time, for, you know, being polite or being whatever. Sure. We're always doing it. But, I mean, my the fact that I'm alive offends some people. You know, some people want me dead. Like, you know, if, you, if there's terrorists that want to kill us all, I think you're going to offend people by existing. So you have mm. to sort of just accept that. And if you believe in something, stick with it. So I, I, I think if it's funny and you can justify it, you can say whatever you want yeah, yeah. And, and should be able to. And I, 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 I'm not frightened by... If I believe in something, I'll... Say yeah, good it, for you. Know, yeah. Absolutely good for you. Although you were at risk of offending a lot of football fans by falling asleep during the game against was right. it the Ukraine game. You fell asleep. Yeah. Well, I was getting defend yeah. yourself. Well, it was <laughs> three nil, and, and, and then it was four nil. I thought we've won this, haven't we? Like, <laughs> I don't need to watch the whole lot. I tell you what, the last game though, I watched the main bit of it in front of the telly on the sofa and started to essentially have a panic attack because I was just I cannot cope with this. So I watched the extra time in the bath and I really recommend that. Put in some salt in, put a little candle on. Wait, just to calm down? Just to calm myself down. Actually, and I don't really care about football normally, but I was oh, no, so but into it. Oh, no, getting... Yeah. Of course they are. And why, why wouldn't they? I mean, I, as I've said, if it, if it was Scotland, I'd be in the hospital. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd <laughs> yeah. have to be sedated. But what a team, though. Because yeah. I was saying this yesterday that, and, and talking about sort of um, offending people, I suppose, they have been so brave with what they've done in terms of uh, taking the knee and also uh, supporting LGBT rights. Yeah, and, and campaigning and all of that. And when yeah. I was a kid, like, football for, didn't feel like it was for me. I, you know, I was a little queer lad that didn't really know what he was doing. Right. And football definitely felt alpha and masculine. Right. And it still is that a lot, and there's still mm. a lot of people excluded from it, and there is definitely homophobia and racism and misogyny within it. But that team really represent, I feel, like a progressive, forward-thinking... England football. I think absolutely. they're the best of us, and I'm so thrilled that they're in the final. Oh, and, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. That is that's very true. And also, Gareth Southgate is a is a lovely man. I know. Yeah. He's just a really decent I, fella. That guy with the tattoo. I hope. <laughs> I really the hope for that on his guy. Bottom. I mean, I sort of hope they don't win just to annoy that guy because it's such a silly thing to do. But obviously, I wish they win. Yeah. There, is, win. there it is. That's the tattoo he's got on his bottom, and we put a football, you know, on his bottom bit so that you wouldn't um, that, see it. Yeah, yeah. That's very good of you. Thank it's, you. Here it is. Yeah. No, because I know I, it's only a bum though. It doesn't. It's mean only that. a bum, isn't it? We've all got one. We certainly have. We certainly have. <laughs> so, That's the message I want everyone watching this show to, to remember. We've, We've all, all got a bum. Got a bum. <laughs> <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of people getting a tattoo of Gareth Southgate on the bum. Yeah. And other parts of yeah. their anatomy. Thank you, Flower. Always a joy. Thank Always you a joy. So much for and then um, more, more, more. How do you lice it? How do you lice it? Starts in March and in Newcastle. There are tickets available. They're very much are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Joe, thanks ever so much. Thanks it's for great. having me. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.